Memories of a Goldfish by Devin Sillian and illustrated by Tim Bowers. Day one, I swam around my bowl. Day two, I swam around my bowl twice. Day three, I swam around my bowl. I thought about taking a nap, but fish don't sleep. So I swam around my bowl. Day four, I got some company today. I don't like the looks of him one bit. He doesn't say anything. He just bubbles. Day five, Mr. Bubbles hasn't said a word. He just looks at me. I said, hello, today, and he said, girl, he's creepy. Day six, today my bowl looks like a garden. There are a bunch of plants here now. I guess I'll have to water them. Great. Day seven, Mr. Bubbles and I now have company. He's a snail. He says his name is Mervin, and he likes to eat the slime off the inside of the bowl. He's disgusting. Day 8. Things are getting very crowded. While watering the plants, I met a crab named Fred. I offered him my fin, and he nearly cut it off. Even Mr. Bubbles is afraid of him. Fred says I should stay on my own side of the bowl. Look, I said, the whole bowl is my side of the bowl. He snapped his claw and Mervyn fainted. I gotta get out of here. Day 9. That does it. My bowl now contains a sunken pirate ship, two guppies named Rhonda and Clark, and an angelfish named Chacha, who says she's from Hollywood. I can't turn around without bumping into something. At least Mervyn is happy. There's more gunk on the side of the bowl every day. Day 10. This is ridiculous. I was trying to find room for a swim today when Rhonda and Clark told me they were going to have babies soon. Like there's room for that. Fred knocked Mr. Bubbles over and he became tangled in the plants. Cha-Cha said she couldn't help Mr. Bubbles but needed me to apply her sunscreen. The sides of the bowls are covered in slime and Mervyn says he's too full to eat anymore. Yuck. Day 11. I'm a nervous wreck. Trying to avoid Fred, I turned around quickly this morning and came face to face with my reflection in a mirror. I nearly jumped out of my gills. I don't even look like myself anymore. I need to relax. Day 12. I've had it. Rhonda and Clark were racing around the bowl. Fred was fighting with Mr. Bubbles. Mervyn kept belching and Chacha told me I was standing in her light. I just lost it. This is my bowl, I screamed. I want my bowl back. Day 13. Today I got my wish. Sort of. With a whoosh and a splash and a clank and a plunge, I was suddenly in a very tiny bowl of clear, pure water. Ah, oh, it was small, but it was all mine. It was heavenly. I swam around my new bowl twice. But I started to wonder what had happened to everyone. When I last saw Mr. Bubbles, he was tangled in green. Who would help him? Poor Mervyn was probably sick as a dogfish. He needs me. Chacha will get a sunburn without me around. What about Rhonda and Clark? Did Rhonda have her baby guppies? There are probably a thousand of them. They need me to make guppy bottles and change gu guppy diapers. Even Fred needs me. I'm the only one who can really talk to the crabby guy. Have they noticed I'm gone? Does anyone miss me? I started to cry. And that's not easy for a fish to do. Day 14. After a sad night, there was a whoosh and a splash and a clank and a plunge and I was suddenly sprayed in the face by bubbles. 
Mr. Bubbles gurgled a happy tune. Rhonda and Clark raced by me like two speedboats, followed by twelve of the cutest baby guppies you've ever seen. Mervyn waved his tail at me from the nice glass of our enormous tank. Chacha sat happily beneath an umbrella. I think even Fred missed me. We were all back together, and I looked around and realized I was part of a big family. I guess I must have smiled because Clark said, You look happy. I wanted to see for myself. Where's the mirror? I asked. What mirror? asked Clark. We don't have a mirror, said Fred. No mirror? No wonder I didn't look like myself. It wasn't me I was seeing. Her name is Gracie, and she's the color of a fresh tangerine. She's a Pisces, just like me, and today we're going to swim around the tank together. Twice.